All right, boys, welcome to what is probably the new best top tier premium in War Thunder. Yes, top tier premium. Now, I know this is a 7.7 .7 vehicle, but it could be 10.7. We're, of course, taking a look at the Vidar. This is a Danish import of the South Korean K9 Howitzer, I believe. Coming to the Swedish tech tree in the fifth rank and at battery rating 7.7 .7 in arcade, realistic and simulator. It's currently on sale in the Gaijin store for the cost of 45 British pounds sterling. It also comes with 2,000 golden eagles and 15 days of premium time. To put it in your lineup, it's the same 10,000 silver lines as you'd expect from any other premium. And for the expert qualification, which will help you out a lot with the reload speed, it's 440,000 silver lions. And for the ace qualification, it's 1,100 golden eagles. I'd recommend getting these two if you can afford it. For the rewards, and just bear in mind that I do use a premium account, but for our RP modifier, we have a base of 1.9, which gives us 570%. For the Silver Lion modifier, it's a base of 2.1, which gives us 630%. So, boys and girls, well, I say boys and girls, it's 99.9% .9 men, and I'm going to guess that last 0.1% of girls used to be men, if you know what I mean. Anyway though, on with the video, should you buy this 155mm HE firing monster? Well it certainly has been making a splash with its HE round, pardon the shitty pun, especially within the War Thunder community, with calls for this thing to be increased in battle rating. And it certainly isn't hard to see why. We're going to cover all those reasons in this video, and even touch on some of the negatives of this tank. Anyway, boys, sit back and relax, grab yourself a beer, and let's roll that intro. Alright, boys, so welcome back. You've probably heard that one of the major benefits of the Vidar is its absolutely insane mobility. It's got a 1000 horsepower engine with a weight of 48 tons, giving it a power to weight ratio of 20.8 horsepower per ton. Very nippy indeed if I do say so myself. It does have some issues, its hull traverse is a little bit sluggish, but it's not. Overall it's a fantastic vehicle in terms of mobility, 68km per hour going forward and 39km per hour in reverse sorry. You can get around the map at the start of a game very easily. And you really do have to do this in this tank. Obviously, as we'll see shortly in the armor section, this certainly is not a brawling vehicle. You're going to have to stay at medium to long range and use that fantastic gun to work. Anyway, if we take a look at the cross section here, we can see that we have a crew of five men. We've got four lads just chilling in the turret and a driver in the hull. If we change the camera angle to the rear of the vehicle, we can see that down below we've got the charges for the main gun. And then in the turret bustle, as well as at the very rear of the vehicle, we have the actual shells. I would notice that this does make a large ammunition hazard. It will go up in flames if you get hit. But considering this tank has no armor whatsoever, it doesn't really matter if you do get hit. You're probably going to die anyway, boys. But that's a skill issue. Just don't get shot. Anyway, we move on to the armor of the vehicle or the survivability, I guess. Against 50 caliber rounds, it's actually surprisingly well protected. We can't be penetrated at pretty much any range. Uh, well, at point blank range, we can't be penetrated by APIT. Even against the Soviet 14.5mm heavy machine gun, we cannot be penetrated really apart from some areas of the turret ring. But when we move up to a larger cannon size, up to the 30mm found on the BTR 80A, we can be penetrated at point blank range at any angle really. And as you can imagine, any calibre higher than that and you are at easy penetration. Because the Vidar is probably made out of recycled coke cans, the armor's that thin, it is very vulnerable to being strafed and to artillery. So if you do start to see those yellow smoke shells being dropped by the enemy artillery, don't stay there and take a chance, just get into cover or get away from there. As AI artillery is one of the easiest ways for your crew to be turned into IKEA meatballs. Anyway, onto the main gun. This is the 155mm CN98 which brings us on to one of the biggest downsides of the Vidar, and that is the gun depression. We only have four degrees of gun depression, 
This means we can't really use depressions in the landscape. I've said depressions like four times in a row. But anyway, going hull down in this tank isn't really an option. It also makes it harder on maps with hilly terrain. You can't peek over and get a long range snipe really. You kind of have to expose your vehicle a lot, which does make it a little bit etchy in some scenarios, especially in up tiers when your enemies have gun stabilizers. Speaking of which, the Vidar does not get a gun stabilizer, which is a little bit of a letdown, but you don't, why would you put a gun stabilizer on a fire support weapon, I guess? Anyway, it does have 70 degrees of gun elevation, which does allow us to target low flying helicopters and planes. Spoiler alert, we do get a HEVT shell, but we'll cover that shortly. But quickly, dear viewer, let's touch on the ammunition. We can carry 48 in total, and we have two rounds in our first stage ammunition. I spoke earlier in the introduction about how the expert qualification helps with your reload speed. And with a stock crew, our reload time is 7.8 seconds. But with an ace crew, that drops down to 6 seconds. Now, my dear friends, this 6 second reload time is the reload time for the 2 round ready rack. After those 2 rounds have been fired, your reload time does increase up to around 10 seconds. Still pretty good though for a 155 howitzer barrel. But it does put you at a slight disadvantage if you are just playing like a chad and going full on brawler mode. Another downside in my opinion is definitely the targeting speed of the turret. Also known as the turret traverse, traverse rate sorry. I've had a few pints tonight boys I might be slurring my speech. Anyway it has a with a stock crew you can traverse at 7 degrees per second. Which makes some of the soviet heavy tanks blush in shame. Even with an ace crew it only increases up to 10 degrees per second. Your turret traverse rate is incredibly slow on the Vidar. This makes it quite hard in l short to medium range engagements. It's hard to get that turret swung onto a target. And in combination with the lack of a gun stabilizer, it does mean you do have to take quite a while to get your shots accurately aimed. All of this can be addressed though with, well, being a good player, I guess, and not being shit like me. Anyway, we have several things available to help us in our mission to get kills. The first and most important is a laser rangefinder. This allows us to get a accurate measurement of distance at all ranges. I will say though, the rangefinder does seem to be a little, sometimes it's not quite right, sometimes it's long, sometimes it's short by quite a lot. That probably is going to get fixed in an update or something. We also have high resolution, I believe, second gen thermal imaging for the gunner sight. This is fantastic in arcade, ground and realistic, as it allows you to easily acquire a target. And then hopefully, if you aren't a blind mongoloid, you can hopefully get a kill. But yeah, that was a bit edgy. Anyway, on to the ammunition. And our first three rounds are half the velocity of our final round for some reason. Our stock round, the M107, travels at 563 meters per second and has basically 7 kilos of TNT filler, giving it 54 millimeters of explosive penetration. We also get a smoke round, which you can use, I guess, if you want to roleplay as a support vehicle. We also have a high explosive variable time fuse shell. This is great for your 70 degrees of gun elevation. It travels fairly slowly at 580 meters per second, but it does contain a whopping 9.14 kilos of TNT, giving it 61 millimeters of explosive penetration. And finally, the round that I recommend everyone uses is the 155 OEF3. This is different in one huge way. Its muzzle velocity is 935 meters per second. That, ladies and gentlemen, puts this gun into like a heavy tank caliber gun, really. It's very high velocity and it does have 9 kilos of TNT, giving you 61 millimeters of penetration. This is great for basically killing any vehicle, no matter what battle rating. At heavy tanks like the IS-3 at 7.3, I've been kill killing them all day today really even at top tier i've been using this thing and i've been getting kills on abrams t80 bvms even some challenger 2s i believe this round does not discriminate it is the great equalizer it's like photoshop for ugly women this round deals out pretty much one shot killing power to any vehicle that it touches as long as you tip as long as you hit just below the turret breach or on top of the turret this is the mantra for pretty much all heavily armoured vehicles you face. Some of the lighter vehicles though, a centre of mass shot will still kill them. But for a main battle tank like an M1 Abrams, aim towards the roof of the vehicle, just below the turret ring, or directly underneath the tank itself. The latter of which is a harder tactic, but does still work. 
So boys, does the high velocity laser range finding and thermal imaging gun of the Vidar mean that this is a worthy and worthwhile purchase? I'm going to say yes, it's a fantastic vehicle. I've been having a hell of a lot of fun. While I would say that I'm quite an experienced War Thunder player, I don't think I'm by any means very good at the game. So unlike some of the very hard to learn, noob, unfriendly but fun vehicles, like the Centurion Avery for example, that thing's fun but it's not really welcoming to newer players. On the other hand, the Vidar, if you're a window licker Russian main, you can play this and get good kills with it. It's not hard to play at all. It probably is going to go up in bass rating to probably 8.3, 8.7. You could play this thing at 10.7 though and still have a great time. This thing is future-proof in my opinion. It's hard to see what they can do to nerf it unless they take away one of its shells or take away its laser rangefinder. But if you're interested in the Swedish tech tree, if you want a good fun premium for a lower price than a top tier premium, then the Vidar is certainly worth your money. Just remember though, this is a rank 5 premium, so you cannot grind rank 7 with it, but it can still do 1 to 6. And most importantly lads, it is a fun vehicle to play. Anyway boys, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Leave a comment down below saying spicy meatball if you made it to the end of the video. And finally lads, as always, thank you very much for watching the video. Cheers boys, see you again soon. Hey lads, if you made it this far into the video, then thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I have a whole load of other content on my channel, including tutorials and other vehicle reviews. So why not give them a watch, and if you like them, please do consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching though boys, I've been Sarko, and I'll see you in the next video.